Hey guys, I know it's been a couple days since I've actually <laughs> uploaded a video of myself. I know I've uploaded the ZO workouts, but um, look, uh, it's time to have a conversation, right? Uh, the Bulls roster for the most part is figured out. I don't know what's going to happen with the Lari situation. It's too many moving parts. Um, but uh, to summarize that real quick, for what I've seen, the story is essentially this. The Bulls don't mind getting off Laurie. In fact, they would like to, but they want to get a first in return. Now, there's that part, and then Laurie wants a particular contract, and all the teams spent their money, so it's got to be a sign-and-trade scenario because they don't have the money to outright just sign him, which works for uh, the Bulls. The Bulls would prefer a three-team trade because they don't want to take back any salary. Partially, I think that's kind of stupid because I think Laurie could be used to get two pretty good, decent depth pieces, and they should look to get those pieces for him. You know, nice bench player depth would be, I think, a, a godsend for this team. You know, because then maybe you could run maybe one of your starters as rest like three at a time and then have the rest of your bench out there or something to that extent. And your bench needs to be competent. I'm, I'll say this, just following the Pels, you know, last year and the year before, a competent bench to me has taken priority as far as things that I um, look for on a good team. You know, like to me, that's that's one of those things that um, I think I didn't value as much until I realized how bad the Pels bench was. But, you know, that's kind of... I guess where we're at as far as the roster. Everything else has went through. Um, Caruso, Zoe, and DeRozan are all on the team now. So realistically, let's talk about this team. I've been listening to some guys, Buker, I think is his name, Zach Lowe, a few others, some YouTubers here and there. There's, there seems to be two groups. There's the high hopes and the pessimist. The high hope people tend to think that this is like a championship level team. The pessimists think that this is a play-in team. What do I think this team is? First of all, let me address the other ones. Okay, is this a championship level team? That depends. Um, and it depends on one scenario happening, just one. Bulls get into the playoffs and they main they maintain health the entire way through, and every other team they play is missing a key player due to injury or COVID protocol. That's the only way they're a championship level team. Which means, in a perfect world where everybody's healthy, they're not a championship-level team. They're, they're still lacking. Are they playing team-level? So, I think my view on this has changed. I didn't view a lot of the moves some of the other teams had made at the time, about a week or so ago, as like, to moving to say that they weren't like solidly ahead of all the other teams. But some acquisitions have been made that change, I think, the profile of some of these teams. So the Knicks got Evan Fournier and Kimba. As much as I am low on both of those guys, I got to admit they do add a dynamic to the team that's beneficial. And there's the Celtics that I know of who just got um, Dennis Schroeder. And I know people are still looking at him negatively because of the playoffs. I don't think he's a negative for them. In fact, I think he's a positive for them. Um, still not the perfect fit, but I think he will contribute to that team. And so... 
a lot of the other teams got better through the draft. And I'm one of those guys, I don't necessarily care about the drafts unless they're like talents like Zion and LeBron. I got to see them play to assess who and what they are. Like I wasn't high on Anthony Edwards until I saw him play. And even still, I'm not high on Anthony Edwards. I think his ceiling is Donovan Mitchell. And I'm way, <laughs> I'm definitely not high on Donovan Mitchell. I'd probably be considered a Donovan Mitchell hater. But, um, so where exactly do I think they're at? I think beforehand, I would have said they were fifth seed. The big three, which is the same three from last year, Bucks, Philly, Brooklyn, and then Miami. I think Miami is clearly better. And then I would have put the Bulls, and then Atlanta, which would have made, you know, the Bulls five and Atlanta six. And then the other ones would have been like the Celtics and one other team. I'll let you guys figure that out for yourself. I think now, if I look at it, this depends heavily on Jalen Brown being able to play. But Jalen Brown being available to start the season, I might put the Celtics above the Bulls simply because I would give them respect for having been doing this for a while. The Knicks, I would probably put right at the same level. And so, I would probably say there's somewhat of a three-way tie from six, seven, and eight. Now, that's where I think the Bulls are going to be, assuming moderation for the Bulls. I'm not leaning too heavily one way or too heavily the other. It's just straight down the middle. What I want to talk about here now is what I think a good year would look like for the players on this team. I think personally, let's start with Lonzo because he is, you know, my favorite player. I'm thinking for Lonzo this year, I don't expect tremendous improvement as far as statistical numbers, I guess. And the reason I say that is because um, I'm not sure he's going to get the shots. Before DeRozan, I would say, yeah, he's a lock for 14 to 15 shots a game. You'll definitely see a jump. I think now he's definitely going to be more along the lines of, um, he's going to probably stay relatively in the same area as far as shot attempts and everything else. 13 shots a game, maybe, and stuff like that. Now, I do believe Here's what I think his stats are going to look like. First off, let's start with the percentages. And I want to talk about this first before I get into anything else. I think he's going to have a huge jump in field goal percentage. I think he's going to go up to like 44%, maybe 45 And people are like, that's like 3 4%. Yes, that's like 3 or 4%, but that's huge. The difference between someone shooting 41 and 45 is like light years away. And that would make him a very serviceable scorer with the ball. Um, Three-point percentage, I think it'll be around like mid up of 38 to like 39. And I think his free throw percent will be like 82%. I don't predict him ever to be below like 80% again. It, like if he does, it'll be like 79%, maybe 78 But I don't see him ever going that low again. I think he figured it out last year. In fact, I think he'll probably trend up the more as his, his career goes on. With that being said, his stat line to me will probably be somewhere along the lines of 16, 9, and 5. I don't think he's going to crash the boards as much as people think. Um, I could be proven wrong. I'll have to see. But I think he'll get 16 points a game, which is, you know, that's all they need from him. They don't need that much. Um, I think the assist is going to come because I think no matter where, like, there's not going to be a lineup where he can't get, you know, assist. Unless you're playing like like him and like the 
9, 10, and 11th guys on the squad. I think he's going to have somebody in there he can, like, focus on. In the starting lineup, Pat Will, we've seen him in Summer League. He seems to be more aggressive in everything this year. Uh, seems like he's added some stuff to his game. So he's going to link up with him, at least in, like, alley-oops or something transition. Maybe even a random three of their game. Uh, but I think most of his assists are going to come from Vooch and probably um, Zach. I think he's going to get six assists off of those two alone. You add the one from um, from Pat, that's seven. And then I think he could get one or two from DeRozan and then like another one from like Caruso and Kobe White again. I think that's pretty much where his assist spread is going to be. I think most of the damage, though, is going to get done by Vooch. Vooch is probably going to carry him as far as assist is concerned. Um, so I think he's going to get about nine assists a game, which is good. It's a tremendous increase. It'll be a career high. Even if you don't get nine, he'll get around like eight, eight point five, which would still usually if you get somebody getting around eight assists, that's like top five. That's that's usually top five. Guys aren't averaging 12, 13 assists, you know, a game anymore. It's usually you might have one guy double digits, but usually somewhere around eight and nine, which is pretty that's pretty good. You know, that's elite. Okay. So I think he's going to get tons of value for that, which is going to look good on his resume. Um, this Again, 16 points per game. I think, again, he's not going to take that many more shots. I think he's, he's going to be more efficient with his shots. I think he's going to be able to. Matter of fact, let me say this. I think he's going to get to the line more this year. And I think that will factor into his increase. Um on the higher end, I could actually see him averaging 20 to 22 points a game, maybe more. But I don't think that that's going to happen. For that to happen, he would have to have a total, like, life-changing mentality shift. And I just don't see that from his own happening this year. But I could definitely see a place where he averaged, like, 20 points a game. I just really don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's the reality. Um, but again, 16 points per game, I think, is about where he'll be. Nine assists. Five rebounds because I don't think he's going to be on the on the boards as much. He'll he'll be solid. He'll be very good defensively, um, and I think he'll it'll go from being okay. Lonzo is you know a connector and all this other stuff to while he's a playmaking point guard who could defend, who is very versatile, and he'll start to get more respect. I think the next season after that is where you can see a huge jump from Zo where he'll probably be around that 19-10 range for the rest of his career. Zach, I think Zach's scoring numbers is going to come down. I don't think he's going to put up 27. He don't need to. Zach will probably be 24-25 a game, and I don't think he's going to have career highs in assists and rebounds. I think most of his damage is going to be from scoring, and I, and I predict him to be a better defensive player because he don't have to do it all. And... Zoe's going to save his legs. And then, like I said, obviously, you have DeRozan to um, help out. And then I think he because he'll have better defense in the backcourt because of Zoe and Caruso, I don't think there will be a need for him to have to catch fire every game to, like, shoot the lights out. So I think he'll be in a conversation for an all-NBA team, which means his contract is going to be massive the following offseason. We're talking $200 million plus. But he'll be the de facto leader of this team, um, and I think most people will lean on him. And uh, if not DeRozan, I don't think DeRozan's going to come in and take over. I think everybody understands this is Zach's team. The team runs through Zach. I think DeRozan and Zoe are going to kind of be like co-captain. And DeRozan is going to be kind of like the mentor for everybody. He's going to play a uh, Danny Granger or Danny Granger role to the Pacers back in like 2012. Uh, 2013. Um, matter of fact, if you guys don't know who he is, go look up him, Danny Granger, Danny Granger, uh, G-R-A-N-G-E-R. You can go watch and look at his numbers. And actually, I think there's even talks about how he affected Paul George, Lance Stevenson, George Hill, and those guys and everything. Um, him eventually leaving the Pacers affected their ability to like, you know, gel and Stay a team and that team chemistry, which ultimately led to that team breaking up. You know, David West and those guys, uh, Roy Hibbert, 
which is one of my favorite teams back back in the day, by the way. Uh, DeRozan, <clears throat> DeRozan had a career high in assists last year. It was like 6.9, and I think he put out like 20, 22 points. Uh, he didn't take as many shots as I thought he was going to take or was taking. He was taking around 15. Uh, I think that'll probably stay the same. Matter of fact, I didn't mention this about Zach. Zach's shot is Zach shots is probably going to come down. Um, I think, I think he'll take one or two less shots a game, but he'll still be efficient. I don't think you need him to take as many shots as he was taking. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, my stance on him. DeRozan, DeRozan's shot profile probably won't change. He'll probably still put up 20. I just don't see the assist as much. He'll probably average like five or six assists. And he'll get you some rebounds here and there. But I just predict him to be ever efficient um, as, as he's always been. You know, 47, 50% mid-range shooter. You know, I don't think he'll be good three-point. Actually, I take that back. I think he might get a jump in three-point shooting percentage because I think he'll get more open looks. But I don't think he'll be good, you know, something like 33 34%. I think last year he was like 25%. He was atrocious. But he didn't take that many. But mid-range, he'll be money all day. Um, look, they're going to lean on him to basically just, hey, man, him to score and load the secondary play do, playmaking duties. And, you know, try to play defense as best as you can. And he's just going to be the de facto number two scorer on the team, I think. Um, I think it makes more sense for the team this way. People might be like, what about Vooch? Vooch is going to be situational with his scoring. I think he's just going to be a guy who has a more simplistic role. Hey, get rebounds, make open shots, and um, you know just try to take care of the bigs as best you can. And speaking of Vooch, let me get into him. I think his numbers are going to be the most affected out of everybody's, at least from the scoring side. I think he'll still get, you know, rebounds and things like that. He's always been like a double-digit rebound guy. I do not see him averaging 20 points a game this year. I think he's going to come down to like 17 and I think he's going to come down that much because they won't need as much scoring for him. They just need him to make efficient shots. I could see a, a scenario where he's like taking three or four less shots a game, but his efficiency is so high. You know, it's like it it, it, it almost seems like he's making everything. And I think part of that is going to be due to the gravity of the others. And I think in pick and roll, pick and pop situations, Lonzo, I, Lonzo just seems to me like guys who centers who can do multiple things as far as scoring. He's always seen to have that connection with. Like, Brooke Lopez, if you go back and look at his old, like, pick and roll, pick and pop highlights, he was finding Brooke everywhere. And I think in this situation, if you go look at, like, the uploads I've given you guys of him working out, a lot of the stuff Zoe was working on is, like, finishing at the rim and breaking down defenders and ISO. I think using his body now with, that, with those things... You get in a pick and roll, pick and pop situation, and that reputation for Zoe starts to change about, okay, he can get to the rim, he can finish. They're going to be less likely to help out on Vooch and more to try to take away Zoe. And I think that's when Zoe is just going to start punishing teams. Okay, assist, assist, assist. I think that's where the Vooch, Vooch is going to get a lot of good open looks, I think, off of this team. And I think that's the one thing people are missing. And guess what? It ain't even got to be Lonzo. It could be DeRozan. DeRozan or Zach Levine. I think, I don't know if I necessarily want to see Zach Vooch pick and roll as much. But I think for me, I would much rather see DeRozan, Lonzo pick and rolls with him. But I think Vooch is going to feast on this team just being efficient. But his role is going to be a lot less expanded. They don't need as much scoring for him as I think they need in other places. So who knows? He might be a better defensive big. And by better defensive big, I mean he might be average, which is all you really need. You don't need him to be like a lockdown defender. But, hey, if you're in pick and roll, pick and pop, make your shots. Make your shots. And I think he'll also get a lot of looks on this team just for being like a trail big. I think the other guys around him are going to be like jets. They're going to be moving. And so he's not going to be running as fast. So he'll be a trail big. So 
you know, Lonzo or somebody takes off down court, you know, defense collapses. They've got three guys. Vooch is trailing. Vooch comes up at the perimeter. You just turn around, pass it to him. He knocks down an open three, bam. You know, you're going to see that kind of stuff. And it's going to be like, wow, you know, high-octane offense. It's like, yeah, high-octane offense. Just go rush down to the other side of the court, beat your man, and, oh, Vooch trails, and bam, three. Now, as far as his efficiency, as far as the field goal percentages, I don't want to give a guess just yet. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think he's going to take 16-ish shots. I think his numbers are probably going to be more around um, 13 or 14. I don't see him taking 16, 17 shots a game. I don't think, I think with DeRozan and Zell, you don't need that many shots. Now, here's the other thing. Let me add this to this um, little combination here. Because I expect them to have Zell playing with pace, I could see that there's more shots to go around for the team. And so there there could be a situation where all of the guys still maintain a similar shot profile to what they had last year. And that means, you know, DeRozan taking 15, Vuce taking like 16, 17, Zach taking like 18, 19. I could see that happening because you're getting more possessions because you're running and you're getting up more shots. I could see that happening. Is it likely to me? No. I don't think that's going to be the way this team is ran or operated. Um, but it, I could see a world where that happens. Um, the interesting thing for me, though, is Lonzo's shot profile. Because I could see him, I don't see him going less. But I could see him taking like 15, 16 shots a game, um, given the right situation and circumstance or the right mentality from him. He seems like, and this is just me, if you go look back at his workout videos from last year versus this one, this year seems personal. This year seems, his workouts this year seem like, okay, he, he it seemed way more personal than last year. At least that's the arrogance I get from him. Um, you know, maybe you guys see something else, but to me, that's, that's what I see from him. Um, and let me talk about Pat Will real quick. Look, I think he's going to, benefit the most from shot increases. I think he shot like seven last year. I, I think he jumps up to 10 or 11. I think he jumps up to 10 or 11. And so he averaged like six or seven, eight points or something last year. I think he's like 12 or 13, if I'm being honest. Um, efficiency, uh, we'll see. Three-point percentage, uh, we'll see. Those could come down. I have my suspicions about Pat Will, but I have to see. I think he, his role is going to be centered around his defensive gravity, and you're just going to have to knock down an open shot. And just as long as he's a good corner catch and shoot, catch and shoot uh, three point maker, I think there's value there for him to be like a three and D uh, wing, you know, forward flex that can kind of guard all, just about all five positions. But really, you don't want him on bigs. I think that's kind of where his calling card is going to be this season. But um. I don't like I said he he has probably the biggest potential for like shift of everybody. I could see him staying where he is. I could see him taking a monster leap on this team. And again, I think a lot of people are like I, it's if you look at it in my discussion with Zoe or about Zoe. Zoe's numbers the main thing that increased was his assists. And to some degree, his efficiency, his points don't won't go up as much. I think the value of Zoe is going to be on everybody's shot IQ. I think where people get the shots is where Zoe is going to get value. I don't think. <clears throat> and again, if you go look at what Zoe's profile is as a player, he's a traditional point guard. Those guys don't typically put up twenty plus points. CP3, Stockton, Kidd. Uh, Magic, all these guys are like 12 to 18 points per game for a career, okay? 16 points is just fine. But what it is is they've always had those high assist profiles. And I think that's where he's going to be. He's going to come in and give you th those extra assists that he couldn't get in New Orleans because they'll be running and be playing a lot more uh, pace friendly. And so, again, I think for him... 
that's where he's going to affect guys like Pat Will, um, Vooch. I think that's where their efficiency is going to be their highest. Um, Zach Levine is going to do Zach stuff. DeRozan is going to be DeRozan. Um, but I think those two are where he's going to have a drastic effect. And even Kobe White. I think he'll he'll get Kobe White more efficient shots, and he'll even look better coming off the bench. But uh, Kobe won't be available to probably like December maybe, so we'll see. But anyway, that's all I got. I hope y'all have a good one. Peace.